Let's make some shabby chic spring decorations. Hello everyone, I'm Caroline and today I'm going to make some shabby chic and this could be interpreted as French shabby chic. I think it's very French but you may not, you may think it's quite Victorian shabby chic. But I've got all these gorgeous laces and fabrics and I can't wait to get stuck in. I don't know how many I'm going to use so I've got myself a little basket full here of all my vintage laces and vintage look lace. Some of these are lovely. Some of them are absolutely unbelievable. So this one I love. Look how much I've got of this. And it is, oh, well, I can't think of a word that describes this properly. I can't get in either. Where's the end? It's bound to be an end. There it is. I mean, look at that. Beautiful. It actually looks handmade. It wouldn't surprise me if that's handmade. And I've got some pretty ones like this. So I think... It's going to be really easy to make things and create beautiful things when you've got beautiful things to work with. But don't worry if you haven't, because by adding layers and layers of different colours, textures, types of lace, even if you're using nylon lace, you'll be fine. It is amazing what you can come up to with this style. I know you're going to make some of these that look absolutely fabulous. So no time for chatting. Let's get on with crafting. For this first craft, I bought a piece of this i got this from the pound shop you can get it from pound and dollar tree most shops dollar general will sell something like this come spring and summer but i've cut it out and i've got myself a piece that i want to use that hasn't got all these little bits on it and here it is now it's in a bucket <laughs> the only reason this is in a bucket is i want it to curve a little bit and so i thought i'll give it a head start and i'll pop it in here and you can see it's already holding the curve quite well but before I do anything with it, I need to paint this. So I've got this sponge. I'm going to break a bit off. You don't need to use a sponge. You can use a dry brush. You can use, I suppose, a piece of scrunched up tissue paper, anything like that. Whatever you fancy using. And I'm not even going for a palette today. I'm going straight on to my little piece of cardboard I always use. And I'm going to get some different colours out. And start with the lightest colour, I think. So, as you would with a dry brush, make sure you've got quite a dry sponge if you're going to use a sponge. And then I'm going to blob all over. Now, I don't know how far I'm going to go with this. And you'll already see there are issues where I cut this. I'm not sure how you would cut this without getting those issues. So, I've just gone with it anyway. It was very wobbly. Boing's about. Now, you can use this green if you want to. You haven't got to paint it, but I want the painted effect because I think it gives it more of a an ethereal look. And as you can see, some bits have got more bits than others, but I'm not worried about that because we're covered by the word shabby, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I don't know whether to cover all the green or not. So that's the biggest reason why I haven't made any final decisions on how much paint I'm going to put on. But I do need to do the back in case it's visible because where it's curving around, it could well show a bit at the back. I think I'll be all right just doing the sticky up bits. Yep, I think I'm going to leave it at that because it's going to take me forever to do in the darker bits. And I think it's got quite a nice look to it. I don't know if it is a shabby chic look, but it's a look I'm going to go with. <laughs> it's not perfect from behind anyway, so I'll dab a few little bits in there. See if I can get some. Oh, there we go. It's going in there. Mm, I think it looks worse with that. Eh? Okay, let's use the other side of the sponge and take that out. Or at least get as much out as I can. There. I'd rather it like that. I didn't like it all solid. So there we go. It's only just in case somebody sees the back. If you know nobody will see the back, then you haven't got to bother. So I go for my next colour. I'm not going to bother clean my sponge. And I'm going to mix this in with some of the pale. So I've got a tone. If I move that down. It's just a little bit darker. And now come over the top again. Do you know how you can cut these things without them splitting? I've tried various things. I've tried using a craft knife. Um, this was done with a garden pruners. I've tried a very sharp scissors. I've tried a saw and nothing would actually cut them properly. I really struggled. So if you've got any advice on how to cut these, because they're so versatile, you can make so many things with them. I really would love to know how I can make them without them looking so bad. <laughs> So, so rough and ready. I'm loving the look on this already. It's amazing what blobbing a bit of paint can do. 
move some of the darker in now and I'm going to be really careful to keep this quite dry. Rub off as much as I can. I can always add more later. But I don't want too much dark. It's just a tiny bit. And then I'm going to have to come back in because there are lots of bits that are still green. But I'll do that with a lighter colour. So, what should we do? That one, isn't it? <laughs> I forgot which one I was using. There we go. A little bit more I needed. Getting more of an effect now. And then it's getting quite dark for a French shabby chic. But I am going to come back in with some light, which will sort that out if you don't like it. If you like it like this, and stop now. And if you want to, sprinkle a bit of cinnamon on the wet paint and it'll make it look like rust. That looks lovely too. It's not the look I'm going for today. Now, if you've got more time, you can get something like a cotton bud, a cotton Q-tip, I think you call them in America. And you can go through every little gap. And every little edge, making sure they're all fully coated. But as usual, when I'm making a video, I try to go a little bit faster than normal. Right, so now I'm going to come back over with the light again to lighten it up. I could put some white on here, but I'm liking the idea of it looking more creamy. Not almost like a rusty metal. I'm having trouble with that little bit there, so give it an extra blob. And then... Well, we're just about there, I think. And then I am getting frustrated by those bits of green you can see. So please, could you not look at them? <laughs> and now I said, don't look at them. You know what's going to happen? You're really going to notice them. So when you think you've finished, take a look at it. And I can see it's much lighter hue and hue than it is everywhere else. This is the best texture. So I'm going to take some of that back off and then add a little bit more light all the way around. And then I am leaving fingerprints where I'm holding it in place. So I'll blob out all my fingerprints. So sorry about the clattering now. It'll be very noisy. Um, one last look. I think that's doing okay. So I'm going to move that over to the one side. And I also have this bit. Because when you cut these off, you always in between each full one, you end up with a bit of one. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing on this one. Because I'm making two separate crafts with these. And so I thought, why not? I've gone the wrong way, haven't I? I've gone dark to light. Never mind, it'll be fine. That was very clattery, sorry. And now we just have to let these dry. And there they are. I'm going to put a bit more dark on there. I've just noticed I don't like the look on that. So a little bit of dark. Darken it off a little bit. It's too light there. And when we use these, don't worry about these edges at all because even though it's a bit annoying, we're going to be adding something that will cover up any really horrible or nasty looking or pieces you're not happy with. They haven't got to be horrible or nasty looking. You may just think, oh, I don't know about that bit. We'll be sorting that out. So don't panic. All will come right in the end. Just bear with me. Now this has dried nicely. There are a few issues, but as I said, don't worry about that. We're going to be covering those. I put it back in my little bucket to make sure this carried on setting. I think as it got hot during the day with the heating on and then overnight when I left it, it cooled back down and it's staying in place quite nicely. Next, I've got my bowl. Oops, what's in there? A piece of fabric. This is a big like fish bowl vase vase sort of thing. Ooh, look, there's the Mr. Ons. And I'm going to attach this to the top of the bowl like that now i'm not sure what's best to go for i was thinking hot glue because if you look in here there's a little ridge so i'm going to give it a try with hot glue and see if that works but i'm not going to put it directly on i'm going to just give it a few seconds to cool so plenty on all the way around and as usual my glue stick runs out pop my glue stick in then around we come with rather a lot because I don't want this flopping. Can't be done with floppy railings. And now, pop that over the edge of the bowl, like that, and hold it in place. And let's see if it works. I think it's going to, but I can't be 100% sure. I can still feel the heat of the glue, so I still don't want to let go just yet. And stand it up 
I can lay it down anyway. Oh, if I lay it down, oh no, it'll roll that way. What I don't want to do is put any weight on there. So if I can wedge something, where can I put that? Put that there, leaning against my big bowl of string. <laughs> and I can show you what I'm going to use next. For that, oh, can I reach it down? I picked a big pile of florals and some lamb here. You know me, I love this lamb here. So now I want to fill this with some flowers and I... It's all really down to personal taste. So if I get my scissors, I'm wondering whether to start the bottom off with some of this. Mm, cut another length. Pop those in the bottom like that. And then I can start building my floral display inside my bowl. See if I can turn that over a little bit. It's not a very good piece showing like that. Now, where are my bouquets? I got these bouquets. I got these from France in a street market. They pop those in, go in the other direction. If they'll go in. Come on, here you go. Like that. And straight away, my bowl is starting to look lovely. But I don't want to keep it all white and put in some pink in. So, I've got this rose. Now, can I take the back off without it falling apart? I'm not sure, so I'm going to cut it. Sometimes they'll stay together, sometimes they won't. So oh, I might leave a little bit of a leg on this as well. See if it'll make it easier to position. I'm going to put that between the two bunches of flowers right at the front there. And then uh, you can do the back. I don't think I'm going to worry too much about the back because I haven't painted the back either. Nobody's going to see it. Make sure any bits that are seen are very well covered and filled in with lovely, beautiful things. Keep playing around, don't ever think, oh no, that doesn't look well. You haven't glued anything into place, so make it look the way you want it to look. Put some of these sticking up here, pop some coming out of the white, and then we're going to get on with decorating the tall bit. And that's going to be a challenge to film, but we're going to get it done. We'll manage, don't panic. Now for the top bit, I don't want to put big flowers on. I think that's going to look a bit silly, so I've got these. I think I'll take from the bottom here. This is supposed to be a cherry blossom. Take some cherry blossoms off. I don't want tons and tons at the top, but I do want a little bit of variety and enough to make an impact. I've got this and I love this. You can see I stuck one of my little bees on there. This is from another project. I'm just going to put this to the one side there. And then out with my glue gun. Hmm, I'm going to have to shorten these cherry blossoms a little bit. They're a bit long, and you don't want all these big, long, greeny bits sticking off, so just chop them out of the way. Um, I'm going to try taking that one there, because they do hang, so I don't mind a bit of hanging, but I just don't want too much plastic. And then I'm going to glue these. How can I show you this? I'm going to glue these onto my little pit of, pit of, my little bit of fencing. Make it look very romantic and ethereal. And I'll move on now to showing you what this looks like on my desktop because it's getting to the point where you can't see anything anyway. So I think the best thing we can do is move on. next shabby chic spring display and that's very difficult to say <laughs> it took a few attempts here's the other one i made and i can see now there's a bit of green on that but don't worry we'll deal with that now i did try bending this to put it into my little tub which is what i'm going to use Lots of glitter and things in the bottom you can see i got this for 30p but it's not going to bend very easily there's nothing to really get a good grip on it is much smaller than the circumference or the arc on the bigger bowl so i'm going to take this bottom bit off i didn't want to but i'm going to i think it's the only way this is going to work so i'm going to cut it down into a point take that off just so that when i put my florist foam in it'll stick in 
Now there are some marks on this and I can either leave it as it is or I could paint it, but I've got a better idea. This is much faster. Uh, with my gilding paste, you know me, I love using this. I'm just going to highlight the word that says the little bits. Can you see the relief there? Well, that's the plan. I'll pop some of that on. It's very difficult to not get it everywhere, but I don't mind because that's going to be part of the charm. It's going to be a little bit blobbed here and there because it's going to cover all the mess then. You're just going to assume it's part of the decoration, if you see what I mean. And I don't want to overdo this. I know. I know I usually do when I'm going to be really well behaved. I am going to put quite a bit on that little wiggly bit there. The little ri rim or lip, whatever you want to call it. And on the bottom. And then make sure all the relief is covered. I think I'd rather go a little bit heavy and make sure that the relief is showing. Then do it a little bit too thin and then you can't see what that says. So now I've got my little piece of florist foam. If you've got a piece like this and it's in plastic, a good idea is to not take it out of the plastic. So I'm going to push that into the bottom of my tub carefully because it does destroy it when you put pressure on it. There we go. And now I'm going to put a lovely display in this and we're going to put a shabby bow on it as well. So I'm trying to decide whether or not I want this handle up. So all I'm thinking of doing is popping in this first. Decide where I want that. Do I want it at the back? Do I want it in the middle? I think I'm going to come two thirds of the way back. Make sure it's pretty central. Poke it in like that. And now decide what I want to do with my handle. Mm, I think I'm going to leave my handle hanging down. Should I? Yes, I'm going to leave it hanging down. I think it looks better. So next we need to put some florals in this and I've decided I'm going to use some of these roses. Remember, whoops, remember this with the little lines and I didn't pay 7 50 for this. You know me, when would I ever pay 7 50 for a flower? <laughs> I am the Ebenezer Scrooge of the buying art supplies world. If I can get it cheap, I will. Take off the buds and there's well, the rose buds and now there's some sort of unopened buds. I'm going to have those as well. And I think I'm going to have to ha add a little bit more something with these. There's not enough colour in this, I don't think. Right, should we put this out of the way? I don't try to clean up after myself as I go. I just find it easier. So if I use these to see how they're going to look, I pop in them in and then I can decide how much I need to fill out. So I'm going to go one going up and then one coming out at an angle that way and one coming out at an angle. Make sure the leaves are facing front. Oh, that way. You can see that when the leaf isn't facing front. So I'm going to turn him around, pop him back in. That's better. And what are these going to like, look like? Mm, I've changed my mind. I don't like those little ones there. I'm going to take those out. And I'm going to put the bigger ones towards the back. And then the little ones I think will look better at the front. So they've got a pink one there and a pink one there. Leaving the buds in place. But it's, you don't really need to see them. They're more filling it out and giving it depth and interest. we got that. And I've got... I think I'll put this big white one at the top. Pop that in there. So now it looks like that. And then I've got another pink one somewhere. If I can chop that there. Pop that in the front there. And now that's what it looks like. Now I'm going to take some of these little tiny things. Now you can stop at this... If you haven't got any little tiny ones, don't worry, you can stop. You've never got to keep going and going. But the more interest you add, as usual, the nicer the item will look, I think. There are some times when you have to stop and just make it really basic. But sharpie chic, no, I think you can go for it in a big way. So, oh, cut these off. Come on. There. And I don't want that. It's going to be... No use at all, it's just a sticky up bit of wire. Let's pop these in and see where they look nice. So, pop that one in there. And we've got this bunch of three, they look nice at the top there. No, nope, take them out and put them the other side, I think. They should have think when you put something in and then take it back out, sometimes 
you pull out other pieces but don't worry just pop them back in make it do what you want it to do you're in charge put that one in there and then oh yes i think i will put a little bit more oh no wait a minute what have i got well, i've got this i think i'm gonna put this this sort of dangles i'm gonna put that at the front dangling down there is it no i can't reach it's too floppy i can't reach to get it right down into my i know what i'll do hot glue to the rescue do that hot glue bit in place there like that when the hot glue cools it'll stay there mm, do you think that's too yellow Let's take that off and then chop that down and it's always experiment Sometimes you do something and you learn such a lot. You think, oh, I didn't think that was going to look good and I really like it. So I'm going to try putting that up there. I need something taller at the back. Can you see the back there? It's like, I don't know. You can still see this, which is good. But one, I don't want to see that little bit anyway. And two, I just think it would be nice to have something. I've got this foliage here. This is eucalyptus. So let's try chopping that there. I'm putting some eucalyptus foliage on the back oh yes i'm liking that so we need some of the other side here's my other piece there pop that in this side and again the same with the frame it's adding something a little bit of interest a little bit of depth but it's not obvious a lot going on there but it's not boring but it could do with something going on in the middle so I haven't put my pink roses in. Oh, I forgot. Pop those in now. One in the middle. There, if I can get it in. In you go. And then one this side. There. Hmm, it's getting rather cluttered inside now. There. And one over this side here. Then I'll show you the effect that has. And I'm starting to get there, but I need one long thing at the back. Because this one isn't going to be too haphazard. I want it to oh, look like a posy. So I'm coming in. Can you see there at the middle? I know you've got this here, but it's not coming up tall enough. So I'm going to pop this in. And even if that disappears completely, I'm not too worried. No, I like that. I think that's just enough to be looking like it's bursting with flowers but we need to put a bow and i'm gonna put a shabby chic bow on this handle to make my shabby bow i want lots of pieces of fabric and lay them out sort of crossways i've still my jewelry's out as to whether it really makes a huge difference when you lay them at angles like this or whether you scrunch it up what do you think if you make shabby bows do you think it really makes a lot of difference for me i really don't notice it but i do it anyway <laughs> that way then i think well if i'm doing it the way it should be done and if it goes wrong then it's not really my fault that's my excuse and i'm sticking to it right now i've got one brown going the one way so i'll put one brown going the other way and then some of this and anything that's over long i'm just letting it hang because we can trim it that's a little bit short put this shoe and when you're putting these in position if you're going to be putting a long bit on don't put it sort of central like that you've got to cut both ends off put it so you're only going to have to cut one end off and that way then you can make it go further so on this side and i don't need too big a shabby bow for this i think i may be overdoing it we'll find out and then grab them all scrunch them up get a piece of ribbon tie them in the middle oh it's a fiddly bit nice double knot and now you can see some of them are longer than others but check how long oh i definitely overestimated how long i need this shabby bow to be so if i cut it about here Keep all those bits and then if that goes on the handle there oh now it's hiding the spring but i don't mind i think that's looking so pretty so floof it out a bit and then pick my favorite side on with some hot glue glue it onto the handle there 
And then I think a little pearl in the middle of there will really add to the chic part of the shabby chic. The pearls are finding easier to put the glue on to whatever you're putting it on and then put the pearl on. I used to try putting it on the pearl and then putting it on. It wasn't very successful. Like that, and there you've got yourself. Oh, make sure your glue is nice and cold and cool before you pull it around too much. And then you've got yourself a lovely little display. If I pull this up a little bit more, would you see it better? There we go. Altered that a little bit, and now it's a little bit more visible. Not terribly visible, but it almost creates a... Ooh, what's going on behind there? So let's see what this looks like up on my display. And before I do, I'm just going to let you know, I am going to glue this handle to the tub because it keeps spinning around. It's really annoying. So glue that where I want it to be. And then I know it'll be where I want it to be <laughs> when I put it on my display. Right, let's check it out. this next shabby chic spring decoration i've got this it's a bit of prep already done it's just a pool noodle i made a hole in each end of the pool noodle and put about oh, three inch piece of wood into it either side and glued it in place to give it some extra hold and then i wrapped it all around with masking tape now mine still isn't quite a perfect circle but i'm not too worried about that next thing i did was put this onto a piece of cardboard I drew a circle around it and then I cut a little larger than that circle and I put it on two pieces of card, one with the grain running this way and one with the grain running this way, stuck them together so now it's much more difficult to bend and it's really tatty but don't worry about that. Now this does have one way that's more oval than the other and I know this does fit but it's getting that direction completely right. So just check which way it was. There you go. You can see that's a lovely fit. But I'm not going to fit it on yet because I've got something to do first. I've got this sticky bag plastic. It reminds me of Blue Peter when I was a child. I would get your sticky bag plastic. And the bottom's a bit tatty, so I'm going to cut this off. I don't want any tatty bits on this. Keep an eye out in thrift stores, charity shops, things like that, because it is amazing just how easily you can pick these things up from time to time. Just keep looking, they will appear. I got this one for, I can't remember if it was 50p or 99p. For a, look at the size on it, it's not a small roll. So now I'm going to want to put this onto this piece of cardboard. So now comes the interesting bit, how easy is it going to be to peel? Oh, pretty good. And I'm going to stick some left right at the top. Make sure it's central so it will cover when I get the bottom there. And I am going to trim this. I don't think there's any hope of me cutting it to size and then sticking it on. But I'm going to use a card and then come down bit by bit and use a card or scraper or smoother or whatever it is you have get it to stick to the cardboard. Now I'm going to dent in my cardboard there, which is showing up at the end of the light, but it doesn't show up badly when he's just looking at it. So I think I'll get away with that. I can tell you why that happened. I was rushing. I put it down on the floor so I knew where it was for my next project, and then I trod on it. <laughs> so this doesn't take being trodden on very well. Now, I've missed a little tiny bit there because I wasn't quite central, but it doesn't matter because that's going to be hidden. So now I'm going to come down the way the bottom is, chop it off roughly, so I'm not still trying to work with this big huge piece on a roll. Yeah. And now, just carry on all the way down. Motion and smoothing. Yes, and I know you can already see the other fold in the board. <laughs> yes. One of the rules of this, try not to tread on your craft supplies. And we're at the bottom. 
give it a run over. Now, if you're very dedicated, you could trim and chop this to get it to come around. I don't think that's going to be very easy to do, and I don't think it's going to turn out very neatly either. You know, bits of my other projects. And you can see here as well just how, well, slapdash the cutting is, what a better term, on the cardboard. But it doesn't matter because you're not going to see it. If you were, I'd be a little bit neater than that. So I'll just trim all the way around. I'm going to use my scissors because, again, this isn't going to be seen. So you don't have to use, like, a craft knife to make sure there's no jagged edges. Just go for it. So now I've got this. And when I put my ring on, I don't panic. It's not going to look like this. But that goes at the top. And you've got yourself a lovely wood effect. But... Before we carry on, I'm going to do some more on this wood effect. Another thrift store buy. I got these. I think they're Ikea, are they? Yes, Ikea. I thought these would look absolutely stunning on this backboard. But they've given you several, and I'm not sure which ones I want to use. So I'm going to roughly cut them out, just so I can see a little better. They peel and stick, but they're like a satin effect. They're not quite as shiny as usual when you get stickers. If you know exactly what you're going to do, you don't have to cut them out. But I want to take my time a little here and think about it, make sure I'm happy with the layout. Now, it's not easy to see because of there's still quite an amount of white there. But if I put those there and I could slide this one behind, I think I like that. The only problem I do have is that you're not going to see the inside bit of this. So I may just stick to two smaller ones. Hmm... I think I may do that. I'm going to do that, and I've got this little bit of twig to extend them if I want to extend them. So, oh, oh, there, I think. So, this one needs to go on first. Peel the sticker off. Mm, which is the best place to start? I think I need to start at the bottom. So, make sure I'm happy with where it's going. Pop it there. And then, oh back in it doesn't come off easily it's coming off easily but it's a bit i don't want to tear it and there are so many bends and curves i could end up tearing it stick it right off i may regret that push it into place and then give it a rub oh i'm loving that already so now when this one comes a little lower oh yes it's not going to look fabulous this one off a little bit it's going to go there and about there i think i hope i've got that right let's have a little look yes i like that give it a little bit of a rub down and then my branch extender I'm not sure if it's called a branch extender but i'm going to call it a branch extender it needs to go that way doesn't it so Mm, it's quite thick. That's going to be difficult. I'm going to come off there and try matching that up, see what it looks like. And there. Oh, yes, we're getting away with that. And now I've got to extend this little bit over here. So if I pull this off and then I can just work on it as I'm coming down. So you can see if you look closely in the light, there's a reflection coming from the plastic, but it isn't white, it is clear. Um, like that. Yep, I think that's going to be okay too. There. Chop it around. And then uh, stuck to it. <laughs> Lots of bits of paper space. And now, it's a little run over. Like that. So now I can put this to one side and get out the ring again. Now this ring is the wrong colour. I'm going to be putting light colours on it and it's really not going to work. So I need to cover it with something. And I've decided rather than use fabric, which is what I would normally use, I got this. It's plastic. It was in the recycling box in Hobbycraft. I love checking their recycling box out. And I'm going to use this because I think it'll be perfectly serviceable for what I need. It'll save me a fortune. I won't be using any fabric because it was completely free. And it also reuses rather than puts it into... Although you can recycle this, I've seen pieces of plastic like this blowing across roads and things. So at least I know this piece is going to a good home. The 
it's not so much these pieces, these pieces. There's loads of it. I'm going to wrap this just around my curtain. Well, it's not a curtain ring, is it? My pool noodle ring. A bit of hot glue. Be careful because hot glue will melt your pool noodle. Next. This is going to be very unwieldy, so I'm not going to be able to show you. <laughs> I'm fighting with this, it's terrible. It's such a long end on it. I'm trying to get it to stay in place. But you don't need to put it too thick. If there's a little bit showing, it doesn't matter. But try to get as much of it covered as you can. And I'm going to go away now and then come back when I fought with my pool noodle ring and it's all done. So now you can see this is completely covered. There are bits that are a little bit lean on the colour on the whiteness but that doesn't matter and it's a little bit sticky up that doesn't matter because there's another layer to go on but as you see if i just used um, lace on top of the green it really wouldn't have looked very good at all because you're still going to see a bit but that doesn't matter this is a basis for adding something really lovely so pick which is the best side i think that's the best side so starting on the inside a little bit of hot glue and then oops them up at an angle and then start wrapping and this is like a wrinkly vintage lace you can use any lace you can use any fabric if you want to then you don't have to actually unless it's in put the plastic on but i'm going to use this to go all the way around because there are going to be gaps in the next layer i put on and i think this is going to hide it nicely and also because it's shabby chic you haven't got to worry that the ends are a bit sticky up and showing because that's the whole booty of Shabby Chic. It's not perfect. I'm hoping, I haven't tried this, so I'm hoping I've got enough to get all the way around. If not, I'll have to adapt things a little. But we crafters are very good at adapting, so we'll be okay. This is like putting a crepe bandage on somebody's leg <laughs> or ankle if they pull their ankle. What's that doing on there? Oh, we, we've made it two thirds of the way around and we've run out. I got this because when I put this on here, you can see this, it would have been ideal at the bottom, but it didn't work that way. So I'm going to add this little bit of lace around and around on the gappy bit. So come about there, because it is going to be a huge shabby bow on the bottom. So you're not really going to notice if there's anything not quite perfect. And this will come together. Don't panic. It's looking a little bit haphazard at the moment, but it's going to get so much better. As long as I don't run out of this lace, in which case, well, it'll still look okay. It's just I'll have to go find more lace. So. Now I can take the piece of cardboard away because I know this is the bottom now. I don't need to mark it because it's there. And I'm going to cover this with some doilies. I've got quite a few vintage doilies. But as you can see, if you hadn't put the lace on, you would have seen bits of plastic and that wouldn't have looked very good. So it's just a matter of, on a bigger doily, turn it over do this a bit at a time don't try and glue the whole thing because it's going around a curve and that makes things rather different if you can get some pieces to touch at the back you'll hold it because otherwise where you've glued it to your fabric it'll stretch your fabric and take the fabric underneath where you want it to go instead of going where you'd really like it to go if you see what i mean you don't need a ton of glue on this nobody's going to swing on it if they do then they really haven't got the right idea of what you do with a wreath and i've got this but fortunately that's not the only doily i've got i'm going to use up more of these so where is the bottom there's the bottom so i've got another large one slightly different pattern but i think i'll put that there so turn it over again glue this onto itself i love using old doilies they seem to go up and down in value sometimes you go into well auctions thrift stores and they're silly money and then you go through sometimes up to a year where nobody wants them and you can pick them up so cheaply and i'm quite happy to pick them up when they're going cheap and then I put them away until I want to use them. It doesn't matter if I store them for a year or two years. I've just got them at a good price. You can 
dye some of these oilies. If you coffee stain them, that would look lovely. I didn't have time to do that, so I'm ending up putting mine mainly cream. I've got this one darker one, and there's only half of that, so I don't know if I'm going to use it. Take your time, enjoy the process. One problem I do have is a lot of my doilies are similar, so I'm not really ending up with a variety, but that's fine. Just looks wonderful anyway. So now I've got to glue these into place. These don't come all the way around the back, so I can do this from the front. You can't see what I'm doing down there, can you? This is huge. <laughs> not easy to show you at all. So you can see now there's a variety of doilies and even though there are gaps in the doilies and there are edges where you can see the actual, well, the base that it's on, because it's on that lace, you get away with it. It's all really pretty. If you've got lots and lots of doilies, you could just really plaster this. You could also, if you use smaller doilies, then you can have more, if I show you, just sure, you can have more like bits come in everywhere to add a bit more interest. I don't have enough doilies to do that, but I love this anyway. So now I'll bring in this and I've lost where, which way up it is now. <laughs> I did know. Um, that's the bottom. There, let's double check it's going to fit. Yep, so now... I'm going to get another glue stick ready and I'm going to go around this like the clappers. So I'm not going to speak just in case I lose concentration. There we go. Let's get this on quickly before. Whoops, knocking my light, this dries. Give it a press like that and now turn it over and I can run a little bit of glue around the edges anyway but it's not picking up. I think that's done a pretty good job. A little bit there, a little bit there and I think we're done. Oops, glue everywhere. So turn it back over and although I say we're done, we're not finished, <laughs> we're just done with gluing this onto the back which makes it look like a big huge gorgeous frame because now we need a shabby bow so let's pop this to one side and i have got an amazing selection of bits of fabric that's been torn to make this shabby bow told you <laughs> i want this bow to be enormous it's a very big wreath if you put a little bow on it's just not going to have any impact so i want something absolutely huge set these to one side and it's the same principle it's just there's a lot more of it now i'm going to put such a big bow on that something that length doubled will still be fine so i'm not going to be able on my desktop to layer these the way i would normally so i'm going to fold things in half and then just pop them over my finger like that and hopefully in the perfect world that is going to work out So this is what I've ended up with. Look at that. I absolutely love it. So now where the halfway mark is, I'm going to put pipe cleaner around. And give it some really tight twists. Make sure we put it nice and tight on that first twist. And then finish it off with a couple more twists. And we've got this huge, huge, huge bow. But I'm not going to stop at that. I want even more interest on this bow. So now I'm going to make a shorter shabby bow to go on the top. So now I'm going to go for about a third of the length of the bottom bow. Or the bottom high dangly bits. So I'm going to cut a few pieces roughly into size. And then I can see what I'm doing then. And I can compare sizes. And they don't have to be accurate because we can always trim them later. And I do love a little bit of complete nonsense going on with it all over the shop. The odd one hanging down thinking, what's that doing there? That's the charm of a shabby bow. And if you've got any off cuts in the shorter bit, you can just pop them in. It'll just add to the body of the centre of the bow. Making it more flamboyant than it already is, which is on the turn of flamboyance. Oh, I think 12 out of 10. And now pick your bow up about halfway. And if you're anything like me, you will have a few extremely out of length pieces. So I'm just going to chop that one off. And then I can always trim it down again later. Oh, 
scissors. It's not my fabric scissors. It was useless. So now bring in, oh, my big one. Look, these ends are everywhere. And then I'm going to put the short one on top of the big one. And use the pipe cleaner again to fix it on. So a really, really nice pull tight and then twist. And now, I don't know if you can see the effect, but you've got the shorter lengths and the longer lengths. And it's really, if you try to put shorter lengths in when you're doing the longer lengths, it doesn't work. It all just mixes up with this almost looks sort of as the top curly bit against the tails. So now we just need to attach this to the bottom of, oh, bring it in, it's getting very heavy now, this. So now chop the ends off your pipe cleaner, because you don't need those anymore. And I'm going to get a piece of wire, put it around where the pipe cleaner is, like that, and then bring it down through, see if I can show you this, down through between the frame and the pool noodle, which is a bit fiddly. Give that really tight pull, give it a bit of twist just to make sure it's stuck firmly, and then I'm going to glue that to the back there. I don't really know the best method for this. If I could get it, let's see, I'd like to be able to put it back through the pool noodle, but I don't know if it's going to work. No, it's just not going to go, it's not happy. So I'm just going to put that there, and I was going to hot glue it into place, but my hot glue gun just switched itself off i don't know what's the problem with this maybe it's overheated so i'm gonna have to come up with another thing to do well, what I, oops what i was going to do was put some hot glue on here and then get yourself a piece of fabric any fabric cut it to size and put it over the top like that with plenty of hot glue and that way then it's not sharp you then need to add a hanger to the other side on the top so now we're back to this and I'm wondering whether to put a bow on the top as well. You know me, any excuse for a bow and this is flamboyant. Absolutely. There's no denying it. Flamboyance rules with this bow. So I've got this piece of fabric here and I'm wondering whether that'll be too big. Let's try it. It's always fun to try things even if they go wrong. So make myself two loops. I'm going to do a loopy bow, nice and simple. Tie the two loops together. Twist it around. Give it a bit of a tug. Now open out the bow bits like that. Oh, I do think it looks lovely. And chop this off. Now I know how long I need it to be. So I've got this. Now I would have liked to have put it down there. I think I'll just show you. This is very difficult. I would have liked to put it on top of all the shaggy dangly bits, but then it's really covering the image. So I could put it on the front there, but then you've got all these bits behind that I didn't want behind. So I've boxed myself into a corner there, so I'm thinking of putting it on the top there. What do you think? Hmm. Probably need to use that side. I think it's probably a bit neater. Too much or perfect? I think really it's too much, isn't it? <laughs> It, I'm not going to put it on. You can see what it would have looked like if I put it on, but I am going to restrain myself. I'm not going to put that on. Even though I'm not going to put a bow on, I'm tempted to put something else on. So I've got these lovely little paper roses to show you there. So I'm going to chop the end bit off because I don't want it all. I've got six of them, so let's have a look. What they look like if I dot them around here and how... What sort of spacing I'd have to put on anyway to dot them around. Oh, I think they look really nice. Let's see if my glue gun will hold up. Poor thing's not looking very well at all. They're not very well spaced, are they? Come on now. Space them out a little bit better, Caroline. You can do this. There, I think that'll be fine. Oops, that one's still alive. A blob of hot glue. Oh, at least my... Oh, no, now he's coming out by the... Oh, bucket full. Obviously gone into overdrive now. So stick those out. You can't see that one up there. So there it is. And that one there. This one here. And I've lost one. I've lost one. Come back. There he is. Pop this one. Where was it? About there. Now I love that. 
I definitely think they are the right idea. I wish I could have put a bow on. I really do, but I know it really wouldn't have worked. So let's see what this looks like up on my display. Uh, my glue gun is really temperamental one minute it's pouring glue the next minute it's cooling down and the light is very feeble so i'm going to have to see if i can figure out what the problem is with that so i don't want to start any more crafts and then find out i can't finish them so we'll perhaps do some more of this next week if you've enjoyed this video then don't forget to give me a thumbs up and it would be great if you could subscribe i've got so many ideas coming up for the next year oh we're gonna have such fun I'll see you all next time, but until then, don't forget, happy crafting and have fun. Bye!